If you are new here, this is the most beginner friendly complete web development course and these are some of the projects we will be covering in this course. I upload lots of lessons per week so please subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss any of them. I respond promptly to comments so if you want to ask or say something, feel free to drop it in the comments. If you missed any of the previous lessons, the link to the entire playlist is down in the description box. Let's get started. Hello guys, so it's time to apply the concepts that we've been studying so far. And this is what we are going to build, this simple website over here. This actually applies everything that's almost everything that we've studied so far, so it's going to be interesting. We have a website over here that has three pages, the home page where we currently are, the about page, and finally the services page. This is a fictional website. Actually, this is a project from a tutorial I saw some time and then I realized it actually applies almost everything that we've studied. So I took it and then modified it and then we are going to use it to practice what we've studied so far. Ideas Farms is not um, fictional, it's a real company, but this website doesn't belong to them. I just created it. First, before you start any project at all, you want to get some things set up. But before we talk about the things that you need to set up, let me tell you something little about this website that we have here. This website is the kind that we call responsive. What we mean by responsive is that when the screen size changes, the content of the website adjusts to conform to the screen size. Watch this. Watch this piece. Did you see that? So once the screen size got smaller, it couldn't contain all the three elements, so they stuck on each other. The same thing for down here. Okay, so when we resize it to a bigger screen size, you see that the content changes to suit the screen size. This is what we call a responsive website. And responsivity is very, very important. You want your users to be able to use the website comfortably on whatever screen that they find themselves. You also see that at the header, there's some change here to suit a smaller screen size. Okay, so you want to make sure your users enjoy using your platform. And an example of a non-responsive website will be this one over here. So you see, this is the content of the website. But when the screen size begins to get smaller, it's hiding everything over there. And it's adding a horizontal screw, which we really don't want to use at all. Okay, so this is a non-responsive website. Now that we understand what a responsive website, let's look at the things you need to do before you start any project at all. The first thing you need to do before you start any project at all is to create what you call a mock-up of your project. So you want to take a pen and a paper or if you know Photoshop very well, you can also use Photoshop. You want to try to draw down the structure of the platform you are going to create. Let's say the home page, you want to draw um, exactly where what will be Okay, I'm going to have a header, there will be some button here. You draw out the structure, not any artistic anything, just something um, simple to represent what you are going to do before you start putting it together. It helps very well. The second thing you want to do is also to decide on the colors you are going to use. In designing, especially when you are not a master of colors, you want to keep to as few colors as possible. It's advisable that you have a primary color and a secondary color. So two colors and that is enough. As you can see on this website, you can see there's this dark gray and then there's this orange. Sorry, this dark yellow <laughs> or orange or whatever. You want to keep your colors simple, okay? I will do a separate um, tutorial on getting started with a project, the things that you need to put together. But this is just by the way. The best place to do this is using the Adobe Color Palette Creator. So you create a color palette. I would, as I said, I'll do a separate video on um, and we'll go into details on this. The next thing is to also get your resources together. And in your resources, you, you have images, of course. You want to compress your images. You want to have images that are as small as possible so that um, they don't slow down your website. You see, I don't know if you've noticed, but if you go onto some website and it takes so long to load, usually it's because of the big sizes of the content. So a video or a picture, but the problem is usually from pictures. We don't usually put a lot of videos on website, right? So if you have pictures with big sizes, even one megabyte is too big, okay? You want to keep your images down to kilobytes. And the place to do this is kush.app. This is a service from google this let me take this opportunity to show you something this is 
a progressive web app which means that you can install it and it will work offline for most progressive web apps when you go the browser automatically detects and then it gives you this plus button over here when i click to ask me to install so i can install it from here the next thing is to of course get your first of course you'd have gotten your images before you compress them and the place to get the images as i've always mentioned is pexels.com you can also get videos from there as well and i think um, for gifs too you can get them from there okay so now you are ready to start your project you want to set up your development environment as i've always said let's create a folder for the sake of time i've already created my folder which i have named ideas farms let's go into the folder and see what i have in there i have the index.html file i have the services.html which are the various pages and then finally the about.html and i have a folder for css where i'll be keeping my style.css file okay all these um, files are empty we will fill them with content as you go along and then i have another folder for images okay i would have have a folder for resources if i have other resources other than images like videos and jives and all that but since they are just images i just um, have a folder for image images so inside the folder i have a number of images that will be using on the platform if i bring up the platform this home page over here this um, big background image is this one and then the customized images are these three and then the images are used um, kind of like icons over here okay these three are over here so those are the resources i have you can also set up like this i'll provide you with these images but um i think it would be better if you also go through the procedure and then get your own images and your resources so that you get used to how we do things now let's open up our vs code and then open our folder and start working so my folder should be on the desktop is your code ideas farms all right so let me open my index folder and then close this one of course all the time the first thing or the first file to work on will be your html file this project or this tutorial is going to be quite long because i want to take my time and then explain each and every step of the way to get your boilerplate code exclamation sign then you press enter and then you have your boilerplate code okay you want to change the title so let's see ideas farms all right and then the next thing will be to link our css file okay using the link and then relationship we so we give a style sheet and then you want to talk about the type and it's this text stroke css and then finally the href and this points to style dot sorry css it's inside the folder called CSS and the style.css. Now our file is list linked to our CSS. All right. I think that will be it for the header for now. There are a few other meta tags that we will put in the header, but for now, let's just go ahead onto the body. Okay. So for your body, before you start, you want to draw out the structure of your project. Let me launch the live server so that we see what you are doing. As you can see over here, there's the structure. So we have a header, which is this part. And then we have this section, which um, I call the showcase. And then we have this small section, this section, and then that section, and finally the footer. So you have a header and all these sections, we call them containers, a number of containers, and then the footer. So first, we want to create our header. And we want a section. You have quite a number of sections. The first one is what you call the showcase. To add the other sections, I just want to draw the structure for now. The last one would be the footer, like that. Let's go back into our header. Let's see the content that we we'll put inside our header. This over here is our header. And I should also let you know that this platform over here is actually being hosted online. So you can go to this URL, drdoodoo.github.io slash ideas farms, and then you find it. You can even open it on your uh, on your phone. And um, this is actually being hosted for free, and I will show you how we do that later. What do we have in our header? We have two main things in our header, 
we have this which is the brand and then we have the navigation so two main items the first one would be the brand and before we even go there we need a div and we we'll give the class of container which will wrap everything for us inside the div we have the two main things the first one is the brand and i'll create a div that will hold the brand i'll give it a class of sorry i'll give it an id rather i'll give it an id of brand okay which will hold this brand for us and you want to use an h1 for our brand and then you want it to say ideas farms but as you can see this one has a special styling and remember i told you if you want to give a line a special styling you wrap it in the span element so you wrap that one in the span element so i'll cut this and then paste it over here and then you give it a class or an id so that you can give it that special um, styling so i'll give this one a class i'll say highlights all right that will be it for the brand let's now look at the navigation bar okay so the special there's a special tag in css uh, html for navigation bars which is called nav we just use the nav tag or the nav element and inside it we have want to have an unordered list that is what we use for this list over here let's look at what we have so far we want three list items okay and from here you can tell that these are not just lists they are actually anchors as well so we need to turn our list into anchors how you do that is that you wrap um, the lists around an anchor tag okay so we have a list this way and then we want to add an anchor inside and each ref this one will point to home.html and then this it will say home like that we have another list item with an anchor inside and each ref that points to about.html which also says about and then finally we have a list item again okay so let's look at what we have so this uh ordered list it looks quite ugly we will style it as you go along oh oops okay so we style it as you go along sorry i we were supposed to wrap both of these the navigation and the div inside a container so this one over here is supposed to come down here so that everything is wrapped inside that container and then we have the div and the navigation on the same level all right so let's see what you have there you go now let's work on the showcase section this is our showcase and inside it we have a heading one and then a paragraph let's include that of course we want a div that will give a class of container to hold everything for us as usual and then inside it we have an h1 that says for all your pineapple needs and then we have a paragraph let me just go and copy the paragraph okay so that would be all for the html for the showcase finally not finally sorry we have another section which will give the id of email inside it want a div which will give the class of container once again this is what we are working on now we are working on the this section so as you can see we have an h1 here and then we have this form over here inside it i want to add my h1 and the h1 will say all right and then the other thing that we have there is this form we haven't done much on html forms and i intentionally left it out because you need it especially when you are going to add back end if you are not, if your website is not going to have a back end then you don't really need the forms so we will do it when we are getting close to applying our back end but for now i'll just quickly show you how you add a form when you talk about form it's just where the user can add an input email password and all those things username and then it will be submitted to a backend and it will be processed let's add this is how you add a form use the form tag then you close it 
so we add an input tag that input is what will give us the space over here for the user to type their content and then you want to specify the type of input and this type is email and then you want to give it a placeholder and the placeholder is the content that will be written here while the user user hasn't added anything at all so we want to give it enter email and then we want to close our tag so the input tag is a self-closing tag the next will be this the submit button we want to use the button element we want to give it a type of button and then we want to give it a class of button underscore one just a class you can name it anything you want and then you want it to say submit let's look at what we have so far okay so this is our h1 and that is our button now let us work on this section over here okay where we have these three boxes once again we want a section with an id of boxes just because we are adding those boxes and inside it you want a div with a class of container once again and then as you can see over here we have three boxes and each of them will have their own div a div and inside the div we have an image we have an h3 and then we have a paragraph so it will be the same thing three times there's a shortcut that you can actually use it's called emmet emmet abbreviation usually when you are typing you see it show up okay once you start typing something so you see this emmet um, show up this is how you use emmet if you want let's say a div with a class of container you just see div dot container use the css class selector and then you press enter then it creates the div for you with the class of container so in this case we can do something like that for these three boxes we want to see that we want a div and we want the div to have a class of box because each of them is a box and inside the div this is how you do inside with this uh, angle bracket inside the div you want an image an image tag plus an h3 plus um, a paragraph okay so these three things the image the h3 and then the paragraph you want it three times so we want to put everything in brackets like this and then you want to see times using the asterisk three then you press enter and there you go okay so it just creates this template for you and then you just add your content inside okay so let's put in our content for this one the first one the image is it's at image and that's customer uh, customer three i think customer two and you want to add an alt customer all right and then the h3 let me just copy so i'll just copy and paste the contents over here oops <laughs> sorry instead of this so i was adding the content of this section to our boxes over here uh, sorry so the image here shouldn't be customer the image here the image here should be the very affordable image which i named affordable like that okay and you want to see affordable over here so i'll just correct it for the others as well Okay, so I've copied and pasted everything and this is what we have now. I know it looks very, very ugly, but when once we get to CSS, things will all, this will all um, be corrected. All right. So um, there are actually two ways of doing this. You can do your styling section by section. So you can add the HTML for, say, the header, and then you go to your CSS, then you style the header. Then you come and add for 
the showcase you style the showcase you add for the email part for the boxes then you go and style you can do it that way or you can just add everything for the html and then you go and style for um, css so you try them out and then you see whichever works best for you the last section here that we have to add or the last part one would be the section on the customers this section over here so i'm referring to this in um, the way i'm referring to this finished work over here is the way you refer to your mock-up in a project that i'm now starting i'll be referring to the mock-up to see what i'm i'm supposed to do next without the mock-up you can tell it would be a bit difficult for you to work i want to create this um, section over here and we have three cards over there i want a section with an id of customers okay and inside it first i want this heading this heading comes before these three containers come so i want an each one all right then i'll copy the content here over just for the sake of time then each of these boxes will be a div on its own but before that let's add a div for the container okay we always have a div and then we name it container you see why we do this when we get to the css class container and inside it we have these we will put these three boxes each in a div once again we can use emmet okay i will say that i want a div okay and i want to give it the class of customer and inside that div like this I want first an image tag and then I want an h3 okay with a class of customer name and then sorry this shouldn't be this should be plus because they are all on the same level okay and then I also want a paragraph with a class of a paragraph with a class of customer words like this i also want the Im i also want to give the image a class so that we can style it of customer image or img for short All right. and i want this three times so i'll just i'll just put all of this in brackets like that then i say times three press enter then I can now start copying and pasting everything in or typing everything in one after the other. Finally, let us add the content for our photo and that's that is actually very simple. It's just one paragraph that says um, Okay, it's just one paragraph and then it says ideas farms, all right, and then comma and copyright Okay, how you get this at uh, sorry this copyright sign. Let me show you this copyright sign use this you see you write ampersand and then copy so as you can see all these represent various symbols that will we'll look at some of them as you go along okay ampersand copy then you end it this way then you add 2020 like that so this is what we have now and it looks very very ugly and that is HTML without CSS for you. That will be it for, for all the HTML content of the home page. You will jump into the CSS and start styling the home page. We will now jump into our CSS and start adding some beauty to our website. But before that, look at the head tag over here okay so you can see that i've modified the head the content of the head tag a bit the first one the title i've added this welcome so that it reflects um that you are on the home page like that 
okay so ideas farms work and when you go to the about page it will say ideas farms about and then services page too and these meta tags also i've added the content i've modified these meta tags are very important for seo search engine optimization okay so when someone goes to say google and then they um, they want to search for pineapples so you can see over here the name of the meta tag is the name of the meta is keywords and we have fresh pineapples and pineapple supply so when someone searches for fresh pineapples um this shows that your website is likely to also come up or if someone search for pineapple supply and this description also describes so these parts here are very important for search engine optimization and this viewport is also important for responsivity so if you want your website to be very responsive to adjust with changing screen sizes this meta tag over here is very important some people actually um, tend to ignore some of these meta tags but um, they are very important if you are doing if you want your work to be professional okay let's now jump into our css so i'll open my style.css the first thing you want to do is to declare your general um, styling okay so i'll just create a comment here quickly that says um, general all right the first one i would want to style will be the body I want to style the font so I want the font to be 15 pixels and I want a line height of 1.5 I want Arial that's the font family if Arial is not available on Helvetica or any sans serif that's available like that okay so what I just did was that instead of saying font size 15 pixels font weight 1.5 and um, font family area her vertical whatever. I just this is a shorthand the next thing would be the pattern I want to set the pattern to zero and then I want to set the margin also to zero this is called resetting okay so if you look here currently if you look at our content especially it's very obvious down here so you can see there's some padding over here and um, around the content so once i save this you realize that that goes away you want it so that you you can add uh, patterns and margins yourself and not have some them being set automatically sometimes it interferes with your uh, work so once we save you see that they go away now you can add them yourself if you want to add them the last thing i want to do is to add a back a little bit of background color okay so of course the background color is already white but i want to set it to this f4 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 which is what am i doing f4 f4 yes this one okay which is also um, it's almost white but it's just some slightly gray and it's a little less um, um, difficult on the user's eyes the next one would be the container okay i told you that we you see why we use this container class a lot so we created everything is wrapped by the container and this is where its use comes so we style the container such that we have some uniformity every section is wrapped inside the container and then we give the container some special style let me add the styles and then you see why we do that so dot container and then we have we want to give it a width of 80% and what this is doing is that if you look at our website over here you realize that let me open it up a bit you realize that our, our content doesn't take the full width of the screen okay over here it actually takes 80 percent and over here it also takes 80 percent all right so that's why we give all of them the class of container so that we can give them the same style the next thing would be to um Give it a margin and remember that remember we said when you want to horizontally center the first thing is to give it a width and then you want to set the margin to auto this auto margin doesn't work without a width and then finally i want to add overflow and i want to say hidden what this overflow hidden does is that when some of the content overflows the screen let's say it goes beyond the screen and then uh, we want it to be hidden we don't want it to create a horizontal scroll over here all right the next thing will be the ordered lists okay they come with their own kind of patterns and margins and all that so we want to also reset them 
we want to set the margin to zero and the padding also to zero for every unordered list and then finally this will be a styling that you want to apply to all our buttons okay so we want to give it a height let me actually go back to where we have our button so that we see the effect as we edit so this is um, one of the buttons so we want want to give it a height of 30 pixels and you want to give it background of um, this color DC 8 EO 8 EO this is one of the hex colors 8 FE right so remember I said you don't have to memorize these you just go and find them whenever you need them So we also want to give it a border. We want to set the border to zero. We don't want any borders around our button. And then we want to give it a pattern on the left. Actually, let me do it this way. You remember, look at this button over here. Okay, this is what we are trying to create. Okay, so you see that there's some padding on top and some padding below, some padding on the left and some padding on, padding on the right. And if you remember the shorthand we use for certain patterns that way, the padding on top and below are the same and the left and right are the same. So we use the shorthand, which is we see we want 10 pixels for top and bottom, and then we want 20 pixels um, for right and then left. So let's save it. Right, so our button is getting better. The next thing would be to give it some color and you want to give it white, which is FFFFF. Right. And then you want to, want to increase the font size to 18 pixels. Right, that would be it for our general stylings. We'll go ahead and zoom into each of the sections and we'll start with the header. Okay, I want to add comments that says header. Now we can start styling this header. We want it to look like this. All right. So first I want to select the header, of course. I want to give it a background. As you can see over here, the background has this dark uh, gray or whatever. And that is this color over here, 3542, 3542-4A. And then we want to give it a color. That is the color for the text. Once again, we want it to be white. Okay. We want to give some padding top of 30 pixels. And we want to give a minimum height. If I haven't mentioned minimum height and minimum width, minimum height is different from minimum width, um, sorry, height and minimum height. The difference is that when I say minimum height, what I mean is that no matter how the screen size change, I don't want the height to get smaller than that value. So that's the difference between minimum height and minimum width. So this is what we have for now. Finally, I want to add some border at the bottom of the header over here as you can see here there's this um, orange yellow or whatever color down there so i want to add border okay i'll use the shorthand so i'll add i'll add the color and it's the same color so i'll just copy it over okay and i want it to be three pixels thick and I want it to be the solid kind. All right. There you have it. Oh, okay. The border is showing on this side too. I want a border bottom, not just any border. Like that. Okay, now it's gone. All right. So the next thing is to style this these links over here. Okay. So the unordered list. And as you can see from here, the unordered list has a few components. Um, where is it? 
it has list items okay so there's the list element and inside the list element you have the anchor element and list elements and anchor elements have different stylings that affect affects them let's start with the anchor elements so i go to the header and i want to select the anchor inside the header okay i want to give it a color first i want to change this color to white i want to give it color white and then i want to remove the underlining so use text decoration and we see none and then i want to make it all caps so i'll use text formatting so i'll see it, sorry i'll see text transform like that and i'll see upper keys because i want to convert everything to upper keys finally font size i want it to be a little slightly bigger so 16 pixels there you have it so it looks it looks it's looking quite cool now now to style the link the list element that holds our header okay so i want to go to the header once again and then i want to select the lists all right first i want to give change the display to in nine and then i want to give them some pattern around I want it to be so I want 20 pigs um, um, I want I don't want any pattern on their top and bottom but I want pattern between them because they are going to be as as we have it over here okay so if I do this I don't want any pattern at the top and bottom because there's already enough space but I want them to have enough space between them so I'll, I'll add a lot of pattern on the left and right so I'll have um, top and bottom I want zero and then left and right I want 20 pixels like that and then i see all right so there you have it now it's time for us to push it onto this side and this is how you do it you do it using the float css float property how you use float is very tricky so pay attention okay so if you want to float elements there's float left and there's float right usually it works better when you have two elements okay so for example this this div okay there's a div that has two elements all on the same level so you can float this to the left and then float this to the right and the elements should be on the same level over here what we are going to float is this this is one of the elements and that is the other element uh, sorry the nav is the other element so you can see there are two elements inside one element one big element so you can easily float them one to the right and one to the left okay the div the brand here which is ideas farm which is this one it's already floating to the left so so you don't need to float it again you want to float the nav to the right okay but we can just to be sure this one is also on the left you add a float to it all right so you want to select the brand okay remember the brand class that we uh, id that we gave to the um, ideas farms red um, over here so you want to go to the header and you want to select the brand okay and you want to give it a float and you want to say you want it to float to the left okay once you float it to the left see that the content is beginning to change all right now we want to um as you can see it is a little shifted down okay and it's because it has some margins around especially on the top so you want the same the header we'll go to the brand and you want to select the h1 each ones automatically have patterns or margins around them and that's why this one is shifted to um, shifted lower a bit so we want to remove that margin from there sorry we have two three okay so you can see it's shifted back up a little let me show you one neat trick too okay let me back up um, remove this and then save so now if you want to sometimes you are you are trying a lot of things you don't know why this one is pushed down what is increasing the space here you change some stuff in the css and it's not working rather than force yourself at the css go, come to the platform right click and then go to inspect okay so you we are now going to the google developer tools it is very useful in these situations so you click on this button here 
and now you are ready to select anything on the page so you want to select this one right here so if i click on it it will select it and it will show me its content so this is html so it's an h1 right and it has all these and then it will give you the css down here let me pull it up a bit so this is the css and if you see any css that says user agent style sheet it is the css that is automatically added by the browser and some of them can be worrying so you want to get rid of them okay so which one is causing the trouble it is actually this one okay margin block starts it is the same as margin top and margin block end is the same as margin bottom that is what is being added to our ideas farms over here and it's causing trouble you can even make editing so you can i can add something here so um i can change as you see me doing i can actually change things here so you can play around with it and see how it works you use it um, every now and then as you go on so i want to revert all right now we want to float our navigation all the way to the left so we select the header of course and then we go to the nav and because it's a tag name you don't need to add any hash or dot or anything and then you want to give it a float okay and we want to say float right let's save it and see beautiful so now it's floating to the right okay but as you can see it is not on the same line it is a little higher than this one in order to get rid of to make it down a bit we can add some margin top and then you will see about 10 pixels all right i think they are in line now there's a lot of try and error over here you try so let's say you add five pixels and you look at it and it's not on the same line you add five more pixels and so you mess around with it until it's um, perfect over here you see that the word ideas here has a different styling okay so let's go and select it and give it that styling we want to select header and you remember we give it a class of highlights and you want to change the color to our yellow or orange or whatever you think it is <laughs> to add that here right now it's looking more like this one okay and as you can see the current page that we are on also has this color so because we are on the home page it has this orange color how we, we do that is by first adding a special class okay to the current page so this is the index page which is the home.html it's the same thing as Oh, sorry this shouldn't be home.html this should be um, index.html so make that correction that is the home page if you are on the home page you want to add a class here okay and you want to call the class current you want to save it so we will do the same thing on the about page instead of adding it to the index.html when we are editing when we are creating the about page you add the current to the about um list item so let's come back we also want to make that one to um yellow okay so i'll see header dot current okay that's the class name that we gave it and we want to select the anchor over there and we also want to give it the yellow color so there you go okay and you want the font to also get um you want the Font of the current one to also get a little bolder. So you want to see font weight, sorry, and you want it to be bolder like that. Beautiful. Yes. So there's one last thing that we have to add to the header over here. Okay. As you can see, when I hover over any of the links, the styling changes. Okay. So you see it gets thicker. When I hover over it, we want to add that hover effect. Okay, and we'll do that with the pseudo class hover. Right, so first I want to select the anchor as usual, and I want to select the, uh, sorry, I want to select the header, and I want to select the anchor inside the header, then I'll use the pseudo class, and I'll add my hover like this, and anything I add here will be what happens when I hover or mouse over 
that element okay so when i hover i want to change the color i want to change it to this color set slightly darker shade of white it's more like a gray it's it's gray a light gray and i also want to change the font weight to bolder right and finally i want to change the cursor okay to pointer or it, automatically it's mostly um changes to the pointer but sometimes you just want to make sure that the cursor actually changes so you add the cursor of pointer like that so this makes sure that make sure that when you hover over it you can add it to buttons too so that when you hover over the button your cursor changes to pointer so let's actually let's add that to the uh, button up here so i want to see cursor and see a pointer oh sorry we want to add the hover effect first so i want to add dot button and we want to see um, hover and see cursor pointer let's now see it in, in oops oh let's go back to our page okay so you can see it's now um, changes to this when i hover over it all right so that is it for the header you move on to the next section which is this um, beautiful section with the background image the showcase section We will now style the showcase. All right, but before that, let me show you something. Whenever you hover over something, you see this tip show up. It just tries to tell you tell you what that line of code does, and it can be very useful. Okay, it teaches you what that property does and all that. So you can use it every now and then when um, you get confused or when you see code somewhere on some platform and then you want to know what it does. You can what it what it does. You can bring it into your VS Code and use that functionality. Let's go ahead and then style. The showcase yes so the first thing i want to do is to grab my showcase like this okay using the id and then i want to okay as you can see this what we are trying to build this showcase over here i want to first give it a minimum height height that i want it i don't want it to get lower than so i want to give it a minimum height and i want to give it 400 pixels for the minimum height all right then you then add this background image over here we already have it in our files so we just have to link it here we use the shorthand that we studied about in the previous lessons the first thing we need is the url and this is the location of our file our file is in the image folder and then it's called pineapple okay sorry so um there's one thing that i we haven't mentioned with regards to assessing files or the file path we talked about assessing files on the same level if i'm in this file and i want to assess the file over here we talked about that so I, if they're on the same level i just use the name so i would have let's see i was in index and i'm trying to assess about so i would have just said about dot html and then we also mentioned if you are here and you want to let's say you are in index and then you want to go to the css and then style dot css so you go because index and css are on the same level you start from css and then you go deep into the style dot css but in this case we are in style dot css which is here and we want to assess a file that is on the same level with the parent folder file uh, or the folder so first we have to get out of the css folder here before we can get into the image folder over here so this is how you get out of the css folder so you do dot dot or period period then slash now we are out of the css folder okay now we can enter the image folder and then slash we can choose the image that we are looking for and this image here is the pineapple all right i hope you understood that so that's our image and we will then add the repeat we say no repeat and then the position okay um sometimes it's not too necessary but if you want you add it 
okay you want it to be zero and then negative 400 pixels all right this is the shorthand we learned about or we've already looked at this this is the image this um, whether we want it to repeat or not okay and you want the background attachment we want it to be fixed so without the background attachment being fixed okay if you look here when we scroll okay this this our project see that when we scroll the image is fixed and then the text is moving over it and then we get to see the other parts of the image but in our project over here uh, sorry let me remove let me comment out the background attachment and also the shortcut for commenting out is command plus the forward slash or on windows it will be control plus forward slash all right so this uh, image when we scroll you realize that the image is scrolling with the scroll it doesn't stay fixed but when we add the background attachment sorry we add we uncomment this one and then we save now when i scroll you see that we get to see the other parts of the image let's then add let's align this text okay we want this text to fall in the center right like we have here see this text is right in the center so we want to align the content or the text in the showcase so you see that text align then we want to see center okay there you go so now the text are nicely aligned but they are um, weird now we will style the text themselves later finally i want to add a color I want to add, I want all the text inside the showcase to be white, okay, so that they can be visible. Otherwise, now they are more visible. And one last thing, um, okay, let's go ahead. Now let's tell the paragraph in the showcase, okay. So we want to first, of course, grab the showcase, and then we grab the paragraph. Sorry, the H one. Let's tell the H one first. All right, so we want to give the each one some padding top. It's too close to the border over here, so we give it some padding top. We give it sixty pixels, and then we we'll increase the font size so that it's much a little bigger. We give it forty-five pixels, and then we add some margin at the bottom so that it's not too close to the text, and we will make that ten pixels. Let's save it and see what we have. Okay, so our paragraph is looking uh, quite neat now. Let's ask, then style the paragraph. Okay, so on the showcase, and we want to target the paragraph. We want to increase the font size to, we want to give it 20 pixels. I think that should be fine. I think that's fine. Let's resize our window and see if everything is fine. I think everything is working over here all right let's continue as you can see from here because the text is white and the background picture is also very bright so it kind of distracts the text especially it is very um, obvious in the paragraph it distracts the text so we want to put a dark overlay over or we want to darken the image a little like we have here so you can see the image is a little darker which makes the text on it um, more obvious there are quite a number of ways of doing this and we are going to learn using another selector so this is the last of the selectors. we've mentioned all the other selectors and this is the one that we haven't mentioned and that's why i'm choosing that way for doing this there are other ways as i said we want to select the showcase first and then we want to um, select the container of the showcase remember that the, there's a container that wraps the content of the showcase this is called pseudo element selector. We've already seen pseudo class selector where you use one um, colon. Okay. In pseudo element selector, you use double colon. And there are quite a number of them. There's after, uh -huh, there you go. So there's, there's after, there's all these ones that you would hardly ever use. Okay. And there's before. Okay. There's quite a number of them. The most popular ones that you usually use is after. And sometimes before what it does is that it adds something before or after an element I can do it for a paragraph I can see that before, after I can select P and add it that means that wherever you see 
a paragraph add this particular style after it or there's other such as the first letter so i can add it to the paragraph and see that select whenever you see a paragraph add the styling to the first letter okay but over here what we are going to do is a little different we are going to it's it's more like a hack or um, a way around the thing we use the after and once the content there will be no content actually because we don't want a content it's just the dark overlay that you want okay you add the position of absolute instead all right then you see top zero left this is something you can apply everywhere so you just um, know how it's done and whenever you are doing any project and you want to add an overlay or you want to darken um, a background image you can use this okay so you want the width to be 100 percent because the dark thing we are going to add we want it to cover the whole width and we also want it to cover the whole height okay you want it to be all over the thing so we add height to 100 percent and we'll give it let me save it at this point and show you something so you see that it's not showing anything at all we have to add a background so this is assuming that whatever we are adding here is being added onto the showcase container so let me add a background okay and i want to use the rgba remember i told you that when you want to deal with opacity when you want a darker shade or a lighter shade of something that's when the rgba come so the a stands for the alpha which that's the opacity okay so i want zero remember that we said zero 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 is black as you can see it's already gave me black here and finally i want an opacity of 0 0.6 you save it all right so this is what we have and as you can see our overlay has been put on an area larger than our showcase over here it's covering all this area and let me show you the reason why we give um, a position of absolute and you remember i mentioned that when you say absolute okay there are two ways first is with reference to the document itself that is the whole page and second is with reference to its parents and in this case you wanted to reference it to its parents which is the showcase section right but you also remember that we said before it actually applies to its parents you have to give the parents a position so in order to make it apply only to its parents or with reference to its parents we want to give the parent a position of um, a position of relative like this there you go so now you can see it applies only to the showcase section but there's one more problem you see that the overlay is actually overlying the paragraph as well as the heading over here so they have also gotten darker what we want to do is that we want to bring them in front of the dark overlay first remember z index yes so first we add we give the overlay a z index of one and we will give the heading and the paragraph a higher z index than one all right or we can simply give the z index a negative sorry if you make it negative then it will go behind everything else on the page because everything has a z index of zero so if you make it negative then it goes behind even the image over here so you don't get it at all we just we give it a z index of one and then we we'll give the heading and the paragraph on it a higher z index so you go to the heading and you we'll give it a z index of two or three or anything that is higher than one okay then we give this one to a z index of two then we save oh sorry so we have to also give them a position before z index will work we need to also give it a position so we give them a position of relative and we also give this a position of relative okay now z index is working that will be it for the styling of the showcase next will be the boxes that we have down here for this um, little section over here 
where we have our form you are not going to spend too much time over there because remember i mentioned that um, you are not dealing with forms for now um, we will do more into details on forms okay so i'll rush through that part but i'll try and then explain a little as i go along over here we want to first i want to target the email which we gave the id of email right and then that is the section you want to give it a pattern of 15 pixels you want um that's this area over here okay on top here and here and here there's some nice spacing over there and then once a color i want the color of the text over there to be white and then we want the background once again we want that dark gray this dark gray background i'll go and find it and actually let me use this opportunity to show you something let's say you found a color on some website that you like and then you would like to use okay and but you don't know the hex for the color and you don't know the name of the color too or the rgba what you do is that you right click and then once again you go to inspect and when it brings back it brings you the css as you can see you go over there so this is the header and that's the background that's the color we are looking for so you can select it from here and then Control c or command c you you copy and then you come over here and then you paste okay so there we have it right the next thing i want to select the each one over here and then style it a bit so each one I want to make it float to the left okay like we have here then I want to target the form I want to float the form to the right and the h1 to the left as you've already done and I want to give it a margin top of 15 pixels so that they match okay okay now to select um, there's supposed to be an input element here let me show you all right this input element I want to select it and style it okay so email once again input I'll use the attribute selector and then I'll say type of um, sorry of email and then I'll give it a pattern sorry of four pixels actually it should be showing here so that we edit it where is it it's probably something wrong with our HTML okay so um it turns out our input is not showing because we made a mistake in the html this is supposed to be input and not input i tend to make this mistake a lot and i don't know why i spell in input as i am okay let's save it and go back all right so there you have it let's continue with our styling let's give it some height let's give it height of 25 pixels and then want to give it width as well we want to give it 250 pixels let's save it and see how it looks now all right so it looks quite neat now just needs a little bit of styling okay so our input element is looking quite nice and we'd have to adjust this button here a bit and we'll do that pretty soon let's go ahead to our boxes down here that part is quite important. Let me add a comment here. That says boxes. We want to arrange the boxes this way. We have, there are three of them and they are nicely aligned. And there's an image followed by each one and then this way. There are two ways of arranging items this way. One is what we are about to do for the boxes. The other one is what we will be doing for the cards down here. But the one I used for the cards down here in this project, I just did it so that I show you that we also exist, but you will not spend much time on it. It's called the Flexbox. It's a little advanced and we'll, we'll focus on it um, later. We'll do a, 
a more focused tutorial for it, for it later. But for now, let me show you how you do it using this style. You can actually use the same way to do for this. I just did those two so that you know we have um, different ways of doing it. All right. So to do it first, of course, I want to select the boxes section. So I want to select the boxes. I want to give it a margin top so that we separate it from the content over here. So I want to give it a margin top of 20 pixels. I think that should be fine. And then I now want to select the individual boxes going through the box. I want to use flutes and flute them to the left so that I have them arranged as they are arranged here. Okay. Flute them to the left and then text align to center. All right. As you can see from here, the texts are center aligned. They are not um, to the left or to the right or justified. So text align, make it center. And then you want to give each of the bot a width of 30 percent okay so there are three if there were four things that you wanted to arrange then you give each of them a rate of 25 percent if there were five each of them a rate of 20 percent so you divide it um, you divide uh, by 100 so that you get the right width for them all right and that neatly arranges them for you okay now i want to also have some sp let me save it for now and you see what we have all right, so the images are too big, so it's still quite messed up. I'll quickly change um, the size of the image so that we actually see what's going on here. Okay, I want to select the image. So I'll say IMG, like that. And I want to give the images a width of 90 pixels. That should be fine. okay there you go so the images are much smaller now but you see that um from one to the other there's there are two fixed together we want to give them some space and we use let's use pattern all right so we give them some padding between them and we give 10 pixels okay so i think it looks quite cool now so we have some nice space between them and space at the top so let's see if it's looking quite good, just like we have for. Mm -hmm. So this one and that one, I think that will be it for our boxes session. It looks quite cool. It looks the same as what we have on this side. Okay, we are coming to the end of the styling for the home page. We are going to style this page, what our customers have to say, which is this part over here. But then before that, let's repair our button. Our button was looking quite weird. Let's go and find where... All right, so this is our button. Um, let's increase the height a bit so that the text lines in nicely. And then you also, you can see that button is not well adjusted and it's because of this pattern over here, the pattern on the top and bottom. So let's remove it and make it zero. So I think it's a, a little bit better now. All right. You can um, edit it more if you want, but that's not the focus for now. Let's go down to what our customers have to see this section over here. Okay. So let's create a little comments. I see his customers. Of course, first you want to target the customer section and then we give it some background color. Once again, you want the dark um, gray background. Let me show you one thing too that will be very helpful. Once you've selected, you've decided on your primary and secondary colors or all the colors. Of course, before you start, you should know all the colors you'll be using. What you can do is that you can comment the colors up here. So you can do something like um, you can write a comment. See that's um, colors, right? 
then you add the colors here you see maybe red then you add the rgb something something you can do something like that for your colors and it would be very very helpful actually let me do it for our colors Okay, so once you have your colors up here like this, then at any point in time when you need them, you can just come and copy and then you go and paste. All right, so I'll co copy, sorry, I'll copy this part here. And then I'll paste it here for our background. Save it. All right, so that's the background over there. Next, I want to give it a little pattern at the top so that it doesn't uh, mess around with the other content over there okay i want to give it 30 pixels i want to give it pattern at the bottom too so that it doesn't um, mix up with the footer i want to also give it 30 pixels okay so try and use the shorthand for this one let me see how you do it i will now target the container of course through the customer section All right and i'll give it a display okay so with the display property we've already, we've already talked about some of the values we've talked about inline inline block and then the block display what we didn't talk about is the display num and display flex display num is simply used for hiding content okay so if i set the display of this one to none you see it's gone now it's totally hidden now that's display none there are two two ways actually of hiding content one of them is the display none the other one is visibility property so if i set the visibility to hidden in, the difference is that the display none completely removes the element okay but the visibility hidden hides the element all right but the element still occupies the same space okay so let me do it this way so you see that the space is there for the element, but the element itself is not there. That's what visibility hidden does. But display none completely removes the element. That's one of the displays. And the last one is display flex, which is used in what we call the flex box. And I said it's a little, a little advanced, and but it's very important and very, very, very powerful. It's more modern. It came in the latest update of CSS, which is CSS3. It's very very much and then we'll look at it into details it's very useful but for now um, we'll rush through it a bit we set the display to flex and we set the content we want to justify the content of the display what flex does is that when you set display to flex it arranges the contents so that they are almost like in line they are next to each other all right we set justify content to space around Space around means that I want the same space between, um, around each of the elements. Actually, the images are too big now. They are all there, actually. But because we set our overflow to hidden, those that go beyond the space have been hidden. So if I go and remove the overflow hidden, and let me show you the way to quickly search something in your, in your code. So I want to search for overflow. I press Control F or Command F on Mac. And then I search for the elements. I think I've already mentioned this somewhere along our lessons. This overflow hidden. So if I comment out this part here and then I save, realize that we have a horizontal scroll now and the, all the images are there. So you see what um, Flexbox does for us? It stacks the images side by side very nicely. I'll actually go and reduce the size of the images so that we, um, we can see what we are doing over here. Let me put it down because I want to target the images and I want to set the width, sorry, and I want to make them a square. I'll set the width to 120 pixels and the height to 120 pixels as well so that they look like a square. 
okay so our images are much smaller now in our content you can easily see our content let me back up so without the display flex see what is happening here but once i set the display to flex let me remove the space around it stacks the images next to each other and if i add the justify content space around it gives enough space around them here here between them and around them as well the next thing will be to target the the individual divs each of the customers here is one div one div and then one div so i want to target the, the individual div and then style them and we give them class of customer i want to target I want to go through uh, the customers dot customer right right you remember this class that we give to the customers over here okay each of the divs is a customer right and now you want to set the width to 30 percent once again just as we did for the boxes because there are three elements so if there were more than three elements then we would set it if there were four we'd set it to 25 percent and all that so we want to check the uh, text align to center once again you see the pattern looks like the one we just did and you want to set the color to white so that they are well contrasted with the background instead of raw white i'll use the um gray white the f4 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 and then i want to let me save it so that we see what we have so far oh sorry this color it's looking quite um sweet now i want to give the whole thing a border like we have here so you can see they have a border all right count a border i'll use the shorthand on the border to be four pixels um, take i want it to be solid and i'll use our orange yellow color once again over here like this beautiful but i want to also make the um, edges a bit rounded so i'll use border radius and i'll set the border radius to 10 pixels right so i think it's nice and round enough okay let's do more about the image we want to also make the image round as we have here but before you can get a nice round um, image like this that you have you first have to make the image a square that's why i give the height and the width the same value so that it's a square and then now you can go ahead and give it a border radius of 50 percent okay and that will turn it into a nice round um, image all right and the image is too close to the top here so i want to give it a border up there uh, sorry a pattern up there I want to give it a padding top of 10 pixels just to separate it from the border up there okay so i think it's looking quite cool now all right so that will be all the styling we need for our image now let us add a little bit of styling to the heading here and then the the paragraph as you can see there's too much space between the image and the heading and too much space between the heading and the paragraph and it's all because of the margins that they come with so i want to remove that margin both for the image and the paragraph once again i'll go through um, customers and oh, i'll select the h3 inside the customers and i also um, select customers and i want to select the image in there as well and I'll set the margin to zero. Okay, so I think the space has been reduced now. What do we still have to do over here? All right, so I think, okay, this heading, we have to style this heading, right? Let's grab that heading and style it. Okay, what class did we give that heading? Let me go and see. Okay, the heading is over here let's give it a class so that we can style it nicely a class of title 
let's save it back to our CSS and then we select the title first we want to bring it to the center so we use text align and we see center all right so it's in the center now we want to make it uh, a bit bigger so we use font size and we'll set it to 30 pixels and we want to change the color color to white okay and then we want to we want to give it a bit of margin up and down here so that it looks a bit balanced. We want to remove the margin up here instead so that you can see it's too wide up here. So we want to remove that margin and add a bit of margin at the bottom. Okay, so that it balances. You see margin? And then we want zero on top. We want zero on the right. We want 10 bottom and then we want zero on the left. Okay, 10 pixels. We want zero on the left like that okay so i think um, it's looking quite similar now one last thing let's also give it a bit of padding to push it a little more we want to move the padding to so zero zero and down there 10 pixels and zero okay so it's looking quite nice now all right so i think that will be it for this section and there's one last thing that we, we I want to show you a text formatting. Okay, let's see. We didn't type the text, the heading in this way. Let's see, we make it this way. But we want the first letter of every word to be capitalized. So we can do that in CSS. We just see text transform and then we say capitalize. And there we have it right there so that will be it for this section here the last part will be the footer which is very simple there isn't much of tiling over there okay so let's clear the footer right so we want to select the footer and we want to give it a bit of padding all right first let's give it the background and see what we are doing here the background color and we use that uh, orange yellow color Save it. Nice. <laughs> Let's give it some margin at the top, of course. So give it 20 pixels. Okay, so we can see the text is too close to the borders over here. And remember the space between the text or the content and the border is the pattern. So to increase the space around it, we use the pattern and then we give it 20 pixels. Okay. It's looking much better now but i want this text to be centered use text align once again and then we see center so we have our text is now centered okay and then we want to have the text being white so we see color then we use the fff once again right let's increase the font size a little bit it's too small now so we see font size let's try 20 pixels okay i think that's fine all right, so our home page is looking pretty sweet. I think we have something that is identical to our target over here. I don't see any issues for now. So I think we are on track. Okay, so let's capitalize this H1 over here so that it looks just like this one. Okay. So once we've done that, I think that is it for our home page and next will be the about page. Now the about page. 
a lot of the content that you see here on the about page are actually the same as what we have on the home page this section here the email part here this part is gone and these sections are also gone but a lot of it is still the same the photo is still the same the new part is the content in the center so what you are going to do is that you are going to copy everything here in the index.html file and then we we'll transfer it to the about.html and then we we'll make a few changes right so control c or command c for copy if you want the shortcut or you can right click and then um, copy control e for highlighting control c for copying now you open our about.html file and then we we'll paste everything here control v for pasting we make a few changes we change this to about so that we know we are on the about page the next thing is that we would okay remove the current from the index.html to the about so that the about will now have this nice colored effect over here remove the showcase from there the showcase section we will maintain the email and remove the boxes as well as the customers part Alright, so this is what we have. Let's save it and go and look at what we have now. Let's go to about. Alright, very good. As you can see, we are actually still using the same CSS file over here. And that's because we want to we want all the general styling we did for um, the home page to affect it. So as you can see over here, it's the same styling that we have. So we just add the special styling for the about page in the CSS. Okay, so now let's add the content of the about page. As you can see from here, it's not much. It's just two parts. There's this column and there's this column here, the sidebar, right? Let's um, add these contents. Create a section and give it an ID, an ID of me. And as usual inside it, you have a div with a class of container. And now, inside, as I mentioned earlier, we have two main parts. We have this column here, and then we have this column here. You can use two divs, one for this one and one for that one. But instead of the div, I want to show you something. We are going to use some of the HTML5 semantic tags that I mentioned earlier. I said the header is one of the semantic tags. The footer is another semantic tag. They have the name header and footer, but they don't give you any special features of header and footer. The one we are going to use now is called article. And it has the name article, but it doesn't give you any special features of an article. That's why it's just um, semantic. So that if someone is reading your code, once they see it, they know it's, um, it's, it will definitely contain an article. We will give it the main, uh, the idea of the main call, that is main column. Right, and inside it we have the first thing we have is this um, about us, okay, and we will use an H1. Right, let's give the H1 an ID so that we can style it, a class instead. Okay, so you see page title, and this will say about us. Let's save it and see what we have so far. All right, so this is what you have. After the each one, we want two paragraphs, as you can see from here, this one and that one. So we have a paragraph. And let's copy and paste the content here. All right, I'll add another paragraph, OK? And we want to give this paragraph a special styling, so we'll give it a class. So as you can see, it has some dark background. Okay, so we'll give it a class of dark. And then once again, we'll copy and paste the content from this side, which is just some gibberish stuff. I don't know why my um, format is gone offline. Okay, there's something wrong. Let me see what's wrong with my formatter. So my code formatter is gone away for some weird reason. I'll figure it out later. For now, let's complete this section. All right. So I have to do this manually. I mean, my code 
formatter, sorry, not editor, PTR. Okay, so we have our two paragraphs, and now let's add the other part, which is the side column, and we use another semantic tag called a side. Right, I'll give it the ID of sidebar, and inside it we put a div. We we'll give it a class of dark once again. As you can see here, it has a dark background. Okay, and we have the content inside the paragraph. So let me copy. All right, sorry, but then there's a, um, an H3 here, which we also have to put in before the paragraph comes. Okay, so an H3. It says, let me copy. I should have just typed this in. So I think that will be it for the HTML of the about page. Let's finish up our about section by adding the CSS. Okay. But before that, let me show you something. I figured out why my prettier um, code format I wasn't working. It turns out I had made some syntactic mistake. That is by adding this one over here. It shouldn't be there. It should be here but it happened to be here somehow too so i just delete that so i just deleted that and save and now it's working fine all right so if you ever run into errors with your prettier code check for any synthetic errors all right now let's move into our css so as you can see from here comparing to this one there isn't much that we have to change so we are not going to spend my time on the css for the about page all right, first we want to, um, let's add the comments and see about page. Right. Okay, first we want to give the paragraph over here a dark background as we can see from here. So let's target it. And remember in the HTML, we gave it a class of dark right here. So this one and that one. So this paragraph and that paragraph have a class of dark. And target dot stack, and this time we are going direct without going through the parent just to show you. I'm doing that just to show you that it's possible, okay? But it's not very safe to go direct. The thing is that if you have the same CSS file controlling multiple HTML pages, like we have here, the same CSS controlling the index page and then the about page, and then the services that will be creating soon. If you have the same CSS controlling multiple pages, you are likely to have. Um, similar classes, there's a poss possibility, you shouldn't do that, but there's a possibility that you have similar classes in different pages. So if you select dot .dark without going through the parent, if you go to the parent, then it becomes specific for that, only that um, um, element. But if you select dot .dark general like that, then it will affect all those elements in the different pages. All right. Unless you want it to actually affect them, then you can do it that way. Now, Let's first give it some padding. I will give it 15 pixels. And then we give, want to give it a background color. And we want to give it 3542, 3542, 24, uh, sorry, 42A. Like this, this is the background. Oops. 3542. 4A, sorry, like this. All right, so there you have the background. And we want to change the color to white so that it is um, visible. All right. And then we want to give it some margin on the top. We want to give it 10 pixels. And margin at the bottom. Also want to give that 10 pixels. All right, let's save it. Nice. So what you are left with is floating this to the right and floating the rest of this content to the left. Remember what I told you about floating. You have to have two main components or two main elements that you are floating. In this case, this is the main container over here, the container, right? And it has two main, uh, two children. The first one is the article 
and the second one is the inside okay so you have to flip the article to the left and flip the inside to the right first let's flip the inside to the right okay once you select the inside particularly you want the one with the sidebar the id of sidebar and then you want to give it a flute and you want to make it right instead and you want to give it a width of 30 percent all right and then you want to give a margin top of 10 per 10 pixels all right you are giving it 30 per 30 percent because you want it to be on the same page with the rest so you give it 30 percent so that as you can see here it occupies a smaller area and then you can give the rest c 70 percent so that you occupy the rest of the space okay. but we we'll give it 65 percent so that we have a little more space around them all right so finally we would flip right like this this is how you select it okay so it's the same article that had this same inside has an id of sidebar and now you want to select the article okay and it has the id of main column or main core right i want to flip it to the left and you want to give it a width of 65 percent like that there you have it okay so it's looking quite sweet now and that will be it for our about page When you compare the services page and then the about page this is the services page and then that is the about page you can tell the similarity right you can tell they have the same structure basically there's a side uh, bar over here sidebar over here and then there's this um, title and then it's over here too and with this part here that's this one so it's actually the same structure okay except the content differ a bit so what you are going to do is that you are going to go back to the about page and then um, you are going to copy everything from here then you transfer it to the services page you change a few things once again you change this to services and you change the active uh, or the current link you change it to the services okay as for this part the structure is mostly the same except for these paragraphs so i'm going to remove the paragraphs but we maintain everything else so that the same styling will be applied and okay i'll keep this part but i'll remove this paragraph all right so let's fill the content of the parts that we've removed first we want this title over here have an each one okay we already have the each one over here so we just replace about us with services okay and then followed by a few paragraphs so we have three different sorry a few dates there's this part and that part and that part and one thing you should know is that once you have a repeating pattern once you notice a repeating pattern that is a very good opportunity to use lists and in this case we are going to use unordered lists which will add an unordered list over here All right. then we give it the id of services and then inside we have three list items we can use emet to make this fast we want a list item and then inside the list item we want first an h3 okay this title we want an h3 and then we want the paragraph as well okay and we want all these one three of these so we put it in brackets and then we multiply by three then press enter there we have it i'll just copy and paste the content right here okay let's now look at what we have in our services page Okay, so I think it's looking quite cool already. You just have to add a bit more time. Oh, sorry, I know that the content is left with this part. Okay, 
So that part is once again formed, which I said we are not going to do much into it for now, but I'll quickly brief you on what the content that we are going to add. Right. So the title over here, the each one, oh, sorry, the each story is the get the quit. Alright. Then the next thing will be for us to add our form. Okay. And then we'll give the form a class of quit so that we can give it some styling. And then we we'll add the div inside. Okay, so we are going to have three form three parts of the form. This part and that part. And that's so once you have groups of content like that, that's a very good opportunity to use dicks. All right, inside the div, we have a label, and then the, the label has a few attributes. Okay, the this name over here that's the label, okay, the label of the input over here, and it has a few attributes. The first one, um, okay, it doesn't have much, it has one actually so it's the four attributes which tells which or what input this label is for and in this case it's for the label username it's for the input username okay and then it will say name right. then we put the input itself here and the uh, attributes of the input the first one is the type and this one is text we've seen the type email already so as you can see we have quite a number of types here so if you want a button a checkbox um a date picker and all those things so email and the even password so if you use the type password whatever input the person puts there will not be seen by anyone so i'll actually put one so that you see how it looks like for now our, our type is going to be just text and we also want to give it a placeholder and then want to say name but the truth is that when you have a label then you don't need a placeholder on the home page you didn't have a label as you can see here okay there was no label so that's when you need a placeholder but when you have um, a label when you have a label as we have here then you really don't need a placeholder so you can actually get rid of the placeholder okay and one last the last um, attribute will be the name and we add username okay this name the reason why we add this name is when you are going is because of the back end when you are going to add database to the system or you are going to add a back end language a database language okay you need this name to assess the content that the user input this is someone who is here and they the type name and then they add their name something you need to be able to pick this up and to pick that up you need to target this input and you tag um, the database language will target it using the name but we are not doing databases for now so um, you can actually ignore it uh, so let's save it and see what we have all right so this is what we have our input is here a little bit here and then our input is over there now the next day Actually, we could have used the met to do this because it's the same thing we've been three times. Okay, so instead of typing them out again, I'm going to copy them down three times and change the content. All right, so I said I will add the password in this way so that you see how it works. I'll just um, quickly do that right here. All right, let me add it down here. Okay, so I'll say input and I'll say type password. So let's see what we have. Okay, let me just give it a look.
So this is our password here. Now if I type here, notice that what I'm typing is not being text um, and outputted. Okay, that's because I give it the type of password. And for the email too, once you give it the type of email, the, 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 once the user clicks to enter their information, they are giving these email suggestions. If I remove the email from there, you don't need it. There, sorry, the password, you don't need it. As you can see, you almost have something similar to this. You just have a few things to edit and then you will have that you have over here. Let's now go into the CSS and, oh sorry, there's one more thing here. There's this button that we have to add. And that button leaves outside this page. Yes, we so add a button. Okay, and give it a class of button. That's the one just so that it affects um, it's affected by the same style when you give these other buttons. Okay, and want to also tell the type which is pattern. Then you want it to see send like that. Let's look at it. There you go. It's looking quite okay. Alright, let's now go into our CSS and add some style. Okay, so before you go ahead and add our CSS, there's one thing that we missed in our HTML and let's quickly correct that. Okay, so when you look here and you look at this, you look at this message part, okay, the input over here is not of the type text. It's not the normal, it's not like this. You see, you can't adjust this one, but this one is adjustable and this one is called the text area. This one allows you to type a lot of content. Okay. Let's go back into our HTML and change it from input to text area. All right, so this one. So I want to change this to text area. I want to give it, if okay, you don't need a placeholder. So like this. Now, uh, text area is adjusted. So this is our text area. All right, let's now go into our CSS and then um, give it some. So, Let's write the comments here. This is services page. Let's add some patterns and some margin around our elements over here. Actually, we just need some patterns. It's already looking quite okay. So we just give it some pattern and then increase the sizes a bit. So we select the inside. Okay, and the inside has an ID of side bar. And then the area that we want to have okay so we want to select the input as well as the text area so we want to inside sidebar put once again and then text area like this okay and we want to change the width of okay, the width that it occupies over here as you can see from here, it occupies more of the space. So we want to increase it. So we want to change the width to 90%. We want to give them some pattern of five pixels. All right, so it's looking much, much better now. Okay, finally, let's tell our components over here. We want to target the other list which has the ID of services. Okay, so it's only one other one other list that has the ID of services. As I said, IDs are unique. Okay, and we want to particularly target the list items inside. Okay, so let's change the list style. So list style. Now, sometimes lists are giving some, they are giving some style, okay, um, particularly the bullets, yes, they are giving some bullets, so sometimes you want to get rid of them, and that's when you use the list style, none, okay, I'm going to add some padding, and I'm going to give 20 pixels all around, and I'm going to also add some border, as you can see from here, this border. 
So you want to add a border and you want the border to one pixel solid or uh, one pixel thick and you want it to be solid and you want it to have the color the slight blue color. Let's also add some margin button to each of the list items. I'm going to give it five pixels. Also, let's say we can see what we have in Alfie. That's looking cool. So how to elect it with is the background. Okay. Let it, let's give it a background color. And then color e6 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 and you can take this field always the gray colors are the ones that have the same repeating values okay so something like f4 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 that we've been using and this e6 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 they are usually um sheets of green right so there you have it all right so i think that brings us to the end of this project everything is looking the same now our services page, our about page, our home page. I think everything is looking the same and everything is looking quite nice. I hope you've enjoyed the journey so far. There are lots more interesting stuff coming up in the next lessons. So I hope to see you in the next lesson. Thank you.